of all, I would just like to say Hikaru Nakamura destroyed Magnus Carlsen in the Speed Chess Championship and this video is going to be covering one of those games. Hikaru, he spoke Hikaru Vince's Magnus and Hikaru Nakamura, I forgot the end, but Hikaru Nakamura was the white pieces in this game and this was a five minute, one second increment and he played the move night after three because he's Hikaru Nakamura, he can play any move that he wants to. And then his opponent, Magnus Carlsen, played D5 and D4 and the game just started, all right? Magnus Carlsen was tilting really bad in this tournament, but at the same time, Hokkaido Nakamura had to be a really good player to take the opportunity to punish Magnus Carlsen for his bad gameplay, all right? Get some good sleep next time. But anyway, I'm up here telling a world champion to get sleep. <laughs> knight to f6, after knight to f6, c4, then d takes on c4. After D takes on C4, we got the move E3, just attacking the pawn back with the bishop. And then we got the move E6. After E6, bishop takes on C4. And then we got the move A6, threatening to do B5, attacking that bishop on C4. After that, we got castle kingside, attacking the center first with the move C5 by Magnus Carlsen, B3. And then after B3, we have the move knight B2 D7. After knight b to d7, we have bishop b2. Then after bishop b2, bishop e7, a4, stopping the move b5 from happening. Then Magnus Carlsen was like, so I'm just gonna castle anyway. Like I don't even care about doing the move b5. I'm a world champion. What do I have to prove in this tournament? And so Kano Nakamura was like, okay, you know, I'm just a streamer. Like, what do you mean? You have to be world champion. I'm just a streamer. You know what I mean? And so Hokkaido Nakamura was being cool. He played the move knight c3, c takes on d4, and then after c takes on d4, knight takes on d4, and then the move knight to e5 happened. And we're out of the opening, and now this is when the danger levels just kept on rising and rising and rising, and just something just happened. After knight to e5, Hokkaido Nakamura was like, I don't want to give you my bishop here. Like, dude, your position is somewhat bad. Mine's is a little bit better since I did the move a5. I got a little bit more space to use, so I'm going to do bishop e2. And so after bishop e2, Magnus was like, I'm doing bishop d7. Like, dude, we're both chilling. Knight f3, knight g6, because Magnus Carlsen wanted to win with the black pieces. Before this game even happened, there was like a couple draws, and um, yeah. He wanted to keep the pieces on the board just in case he can get his Magnus Carlsen little squeeze in the, in the end game, maybe. But then Hokkaido Nakamura played the move Queen B1, getting on this diagonal for some reason that we're gonna figure out in the next few moves. So after the move Queen B1, Queen A5 just randomly, then Hokkaido Nakamura did Knight to D2, threatening to go to C4, and hey, Magnus Carlsen had a smidgen of an advantage in this position since these bishops is just eyeing down on these pawns. These knights are pretty good. I don't know about that g6 knight at the moment, but it can go right back to e5 to start attacking on this queen side. And that queen b1 move was a little bit weird. Bishop c6 happened. After bishop c6 taking control of this long a8 to h1 diagonal, Hikaru Nakamura played the move bishop f3 because usually if your opponent has a, a better strategical advantage you want to just trade off the pieces then since those temporary since those advantages that magnus carlson has is temporary it can just go away it can disappear that's what we wanted to do we wanted to disappear because we're playing as hokaro nakamura and so what happened was bishop takes on f3 knight takes on f3 and now we don't have to deal with that bishop on c6 anymore. Rook a to c8. After rook a to c8, controlling the c file, Carl did knight to e2, rook f to d8. Still, I would play for, I would play on the black side. And then, not Magnus, but Hikaru Nakamura played rook d1 to trade off the rooks. Why not? Magnus is a little bit better and Magnus was like, okay, I'll trade off the rooks. We're just going into another draw. I get one more opportunity to be the white pieces and I'm going to destroy you next time because I know you. I've been playing you for like a whole decade now. Like, 
we played several speed chess games before. Like, what's the difference in this little tournament here? I'm just going to get some free money on the side and go on my yacht. And so what happened was Hikaru Nakamura was like, who cares about your yacht? I'm going to take your rook back and I'm going to try to win this game. And then Magnus Carlsen was like, no, you're not. We're just going to trade queens down the D file. And I don't know what you're going to do after that. So what happened was bishop takes on f6, queen takes on d1. And after queen takes on d1, rook takes on d1, bishop takes on f6, and we are in somewhat of an end game. Two knights versus a bishop and knight, and then one rook, one extra rook. Who, who has more activity? Who's going to promote the pawn first? I don't know what's going to happen. Usually these positions are kind of boring because it's not dynamic, it's pretty static, but it gets a little bit interesting. So for right now, this position is boring, but to grandmasters, it is very exciting because you already know Magnus Carlsen was thinking, oh, I can definitely beat Hikaru Nakamura in a boring position like this. But you know, all of us are saying, dude, come on. Like, this is all of us. This is Magnus Carlsen. Y'all see the smiley faces in the in the frown? You know what I mean? That's a good little face right there. In this position, Hikaru is like, okay, I'm gonna put my rook on the seventh file. Not the seventh file, the seventh rank. Why not? The rook on the seventh rank is a pig. I'm gonna eat all your pawns. And Magnus Carlsen did rook to b8 defending. And it is triple zeros. Nobody has an advantage right now. So after a while, it moves like g4. We're just going to continue on going king f8 a king g2 and then after king g2 king e8 or rook c7 because now the king cannot go to d8 or Carl nakamura is going to take this pawn on f7 magnus carlson is pretty stuck and then we got the move knight e7 now this king can go to d8 and pretty much kick that rook away from the seventh rank after knight to e7 Hakar Nakamura is like, I'm going to attack your bishop just to distract you, just to see what you're going to do. And after g5, we got the move knight to d5, attacking a rook anyway. Where did the rook move? The rook moved to the c4 square. After rook c4, bishop d8, then we have the move knight to g3, knight g3, knight b6. We got some maneuvering games going on here. Who's going to finesse who? I don't know. This is still triple zeros on the computer, rook c2, and after rook c2, rook c8, and Magnus Carlsen decided to finally be like, hey, we're gonna exchange rooks, maybe I have more of an opportunity with my bishop knight combo, and get your stupid two knights. And then Hikaru Nakamura was like, why did you call my knights stupid? Like, this, my knights are pretty cool, like, they're chilling. There's some cool white knights. And so after rook takes on c8, if I can take the rook, knight takes on c8, then we got the and then we got the move h4. And maybe Hukar Nakamura was thinking, I can create some weaknesses on the king side. I got some tricky knights over here. And once we get low on time, I don't know if you're gonna keep up with me, Magnus Carlson. And Magnus Carlson was like, I'm definitely gonna keep up with you. And I'm just gonna dismantle that whole idea right now by just creating weaknesses for you by doing F6, which is still triple zeros. Still, with a smidget of an advantage for white. Well, not after this move. After knight h5, it was a smidget of an advantage for black. And then the move king F7 happened. After king f7, g takes on f6, attacking that pawn. Then we got the move, g takes on f6, and knight to f4. Both have three pawn islands, no weaknesses so far. The king on f7 is pretty active, it's, it's defending, it's doing the exact same um, thing that the king on g2 is doing, and there's nothing really wrong with this position. And actually, wait a minute. E5 was a move right now. I don't know the advantage, but E5 was really popular. And then Knight H5, and maybe Magnus Carlsen could have like weaseled his way out of here with a win. And this could have turned the whole championship to a winning Magnus tournament, right? And so after Knight to F4, Magnus missed that opportunity 
and did the move knight to d6, which he rarely do. He rarely miss those opportunities. And you can see Magnus like thinking about all the knight moves and thinking about like, okay, I'm gonna win. I just don't know how yet. D do the work for me, hands, because you know he don't even be calculating. He said in the interview he just thinks about the best move and he, and he just do it right and Hokar Nakamura is like I'm just gonna do knight d3 because I don't know what Magnus Carlsen is looking at his hands for and he did the move e5 after e5 threatening to fork the two knights right here he moved one of the knights to the d2 square after knight d2 h5 in this position and then we got the move e4 nothing is really happening right now I, I get it I get it but it's gonna get crazy just a minute Trust, trust me on that. After e4, king e6, then we got the move knight to c5. Still triple zeros. King e7, and grandmasters know how to draw these positions in their sleep. And Hokar Nakamura went back to knight d3, probably just to get some extra time. They repeated moves, king e6, and then the knight, the knight, the knight went back to c5, checking the king. After the knight went back, Magnus Carlsen was like, I'm still trying to win this, so we're gonna go to king f7, and I'm going to just um, pummel you down, put some pressure on you on time, and just exhaust you, because I'm used to playing these positions all the time, and I don't think you are. Usually, you kind of do like a mess up at this point in time, but you're playing really good right now, and it's kind of worrying me, and Hikaru Nakamura played the move knight to c3. Not, not to c3, c4, dang. Walk off the screen right quick. After knight to c4, knight takes on c4. Now we got four pawn violence. B takes on c4, but we have a knight though. After B takes on c4, king e7, and then knight takes on b7. Things start getting scary. We lost the pawn, and it's still at just 0.5 for white, but isn't that enough material to kind of? put the thought out there that Hokaru Nakamura might just win this match. Just think about Magnus Carlsen's mindset that that b7 pawn is gone. He probably was thinking, oh, this king is active No, This bishop is going to get into the game once in a while. You know what I mean? I can still probably draw this. So after knight takes on b7, bishop to b6, because you do not want that bishop to be taken. Then Hokaru Nakamura is like, I'm just going to play c5. Just gonna play c5 attacking your bishop. Bishop moves back to c7. And after bishop moves back to c7, c6. Why not? And when you look into this position right here, you start kind of getting a feeling that Hokaru Nakamura knows what he's doing. Knight is blocking these two squares, the d8 square and the d6 square. This king cannot infiltrate at all to get to this pawn. And this pawn on e4 is doing wonders by preventing this e5 square like the king cannot go to e6 to d5 at any point and that's not e5 that's d5 after c6 after c6 happened we got the move bishop b6 we got the move bishop b6 putting some pressure on the f2 pawn f3 easy going then after f3 king e6 then we got the move king f1 and at this moment, Magnus Carlsen decided to resign. Why did he decide to resign? Well, let's go through it because this end game is crazy and all it took was an extra pawn for Hokaru Nakamura to get the dub. Could have went like this, King e7, King e2, staying on the light squares of course, and these pawns are on light squares. After King e6, a5 attacking the bishop, bishop a7, C7, what happens after C7 and King D7? Aren't we just losing a pawn? Knight D6, can't take the knight or we promote. If King takes on C7 in this position, then now we have the move Knight to E8, checking the King and attacking the pawn on F6 and we're gonna grab this six pawn, this h5 pawn, and potentially, just potentially, this e pawn, and then we're gonna run this h pawn, we're gonna run up Hector, 
down the board and we're gonna queen that pawn and we're gonna checkmate this king that's on c7 right now. That was the whole plan and that's why Magnus Carlsen hurry up and resign to get to the next game to get more points than Hukaru Nakamura because yeah, the speed chess championship was very, was very daunting on Magnus Carlsen, especially after this loss.